Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of In My Opinion. My name is John. <laughs> My name is Alester. And yes. And today we are back once again with another mm. IMO episode. You might hear the sound sounds a little bit different right now. We got uh, yes. new testing, new demo mics from uh, Audio yes. Technica. We might be working with them mm. soon. So uh, stay tuned for that. We will tell you guys when we do get sponsored. But first of all, thank you guys so much for even getting us to this place in the first place. You guys can continue to support us at our various social media yes. channels. IMO.pod on Instagram. Telegram is mm-hmm. t.me slash overthingsg. And on Twitch as well, right now we're streaming to 34 people. Everyone's having a good mm-hmm. time. We're going to play battleships after this, but twitch.tv slash overthingsg as well. So if you guys yes. want to join us on Twitch and just interact with us, come and say hi in chat, we will definitely appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. With that, why don't we get started? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get into today's episode. Like, because honestly, today's topic is a little bit of a heavier topic in, that, in is, the is. sense that not, not, not because it's a depressing topic, but because the circumstances and the people around it are having a hard time. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. I think it's um, it's a topic that's a little bit more... Okay, I think to a lot of people, I actually we, put, we are talking about the Yo and US or rather the NUS mergers in just in general, not just the Yo and US one. Uh, we actually put the Overthink chat and Overthink chat yeah. actually, I'm going to say like, okay, 8% say that they're disappointed and upset with what's happening. 6% says they don't actually see why people are so upset. The large majority mm, of people, mm. like around 49%, say that I don't feel much, but I understand why people are upset, which I think that's where I fall in and where's where John fell in Same. as well. And Same. 35% say I don't really care too much about it. So I know a lot mm, of people mm. who are hearing this might be thinking like, why do people care so much? Why, why, why are they getting so upset? You know, it's just any other normal merger or whatever. We'll get into that later yeah. on. But I think we'll want mm, to, first mm. of all, disclaimer and say that like, uh, please leave this space for the people who are affected yeah. by this and just be understanding, be nice to them because uh, we might not be able to understand but is someone's someone really thinks this is very important and for good reason as yes. well. So, yeah. and, and like, I just want to put it out there that like, as with most episodes where we discuss something uh, that could, that is, that people are passionate about, right? We always want to be intellectual but uh, uh, kind in our approach. So like, mm. we don't want to have any toxic conversations about this and be like, oh, you know, uh, you guys are stupid or like, you know what, well, if you don't support this, you're dumb, you know, you clearly cannot see the big picture, kids or whatever. So let's, let, let's not have that. We yeah. always come into these kind of conversations ready to have our minds changed. And like Alistair mentioned earlier, we are neither faculty nor stakeholders in this conversation. We're just two exactly. assholes on the internet uh, offering our opinion. But uh, that being said, right, we do feel that our opinion uh, has some value in this discussion because clearly this is blown up to a, to a point where it's worth being discussed by two assholes on the internet. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, we are not, we are obviously both top from the US. We both yes. are not teaching staff. We're not like anyone involved in the school or anything. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, obviously take our opinion as that or as like a third party, third party looking yeah. in. So, uh, yeah. if there's any students from NUS who will wish to share your own opinions or your own experiences, do leave it down in the comments down below. We really appreciate that as well. But for now, yeah. well, I would just get into our own opinions from a third party's perspective. Mm, so, for, sure. for, for the sure. people who are the uninitiated, I will leave a link down below with like the resources as well as the different like yeah. new newspaper articles Shut. that you guys can go and catch up on what's really happening because yeah. life has been tough and I understand if people aren't really caught up but just a TLDR mm. basically NUS have been combining a few schools the Faculty of uh, Social Sciences and uh, as well as the Faculty of Sciences mm. so those are combined and Engineering and the School of Design and Environment is also combined am, am I correct John? yes yeah. right Yes, and the last one will be the Yo NUS and USP. Yes, so the last one is Yo NUS and USP. But for Yo NUS and USP, it's a little bit different because they will no longer exist. Yeah. The other tools will still exist as yes. separate faculties, but Yo NUS and USP essentially will not exist anymore. It will be yeah. under the thing called the new college. Lah. So correct. So these are two things. Basically, there are two things that we will be talking about. So first one will be the diso- the, the the dissolution of Yo NUS and USP to form a new college. And the second one will be the combining of two faculties that don't seem to make sense to form a new college while the faculty still still exists. La. Yes. So yeah. there's a lot that has been going on in in the whole situation. But I think the first yeah. thing we can start off really is uh, uh, a lot of people are asking why, why are the mergers even such a big deal? Mm-hmm. Do you have any things to say to, to that? Like why, why, okay. why are people upset in the first place? Yeah, okay, okay. I'll just offer my, 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 my two cents worth. Okay, so very yeah. simply, right? First thing about it is that uh, uh, I feel that people are upset because uh, of change. Very simply. Okay. Right? 
change is neither it, it change is positive or negative depending on the stakeholder and, and, and the circumstance, right? People are are upset because there is an uncomfortable change that comes from a uh, direction that they don't appreciate. <laughs> Okay, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that's the main reason that they're upset. Because you see, uh, there are so many variables and unknowns uh, in this uh, situation. Okay, right? yes. And people are upset because like, you know, when, when a lot of variables are unknowns uh, that are, are put into this, kind of, in, into this kind of situation where it potentially can affect your, your life, right? Mm. Uh, people get, I mean, understandably triggered. Lah. Yes, I agree. And I also think the other big, problem with this in in our link down the petition down below as well i think the big part yeah. of the petition is hashtag no more top down so it's yeah. not i think really enough for me this uh, this topic is not so much about the decision whether or not you and us should be merged or whether or not yeah. these two schools should be merged because honestly speaking we are not educators we, we are not trained in that yeah. we have no we, we don't even know these disciplines correct, like, correct. on like ourselves so we don't really yep. know exactly like whether or not this will fit or not but just from a leadership standpoint which is where I think that's something that we can discuss a little bit more so yeah. a lot of people are really upset also because there were not enough information given first of all second of all there's also apparently that these decisions have been made like 12 months prior or rather has been in the talks for like a very long time already but no one has been yeah. Yeah. no one has been like I guess consulted other than the big boss himself. Uh. So, yeah. it, it, and it just came out of nowhere and they didn't, like, I guess, um, uh, consult the students or the staff or the people who are involved in this situation. Yeah. So that's another yeah. big reason why people are upset as well. So mm-hmm. uh, I think that in that sense, I can definitely understand why because there are a lot of concerns that uh, we're talking about more of the year and USSA. The, there are some concerns yeah. like the students are very proud of their school environment, their school culture. They think that yes. they have built their culture to a point where they are very, very happy with it and they feel like there's yeah. a very high inclusivity culture which we really like yeah. as well. But um, then they ask us, they, then they ask things like if we are combined, what happens to those clubs? What happens to those cultures? What happens to the student groups that have been formed? What happens to the staff? Are they going to be the same? What are they going to do in the future? And all these things, yeah. unfortunately, as as far as I know, hasn't been really addressed that much. It yeah. doesn't seem to be much concrete plans as well. So I think in that sense, a lot of people are, are understandably worried. John, yeah. if you do think that if, let's say, this merger happened, and then mm-hmm, instead mm-hmm. of like Instead of what has been happening, the U- the NUS uh, management came out and said that like, okay, we understand that these groups are very important to you guys. We are going to keep this here and here and here in the new college in the staff. Yeah. It'll be the exact same. It'll be a liberal arts college. It'll be done the exact same way. We're just rebranding it so that it's more yeah. affordable for like the masses yeah. or whatever. Do you think the same yeah, backlash yeah. will have happened? Uh, I would say the same backlash will have happened, but at least right the the, the anger and the confusion will probably be directed at other things. You see, mm-hmm. right now, the issue with the whole Yo NUS situation, we talk about the Yo NUS first before we talk about any other faculties and whatever. Yeah. Because the whole Yo NUS USP situation is very simply because things were done uh, without any consultation or uh, heads up. Yes, yes, yes. So that is a very uh, bureaucratic kind of approach. Mm-hmm. Right? I agree. So it's like, a, oh, I'm the boss. I say what? You know, you all just do only. Mm-hmm. Right? Which is like, most of the time, I, I would say the prevailing strategy for a lot of things that happen in Singapore. Yes, I agree. I mean, it's a top-down right? approach. Uh, it's like what most of us are used to in yeah. army, in JC, in secondary school. In everywhere. In your even home. our house also. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, in your home, in your jobs, everywhere. You know, everywhere. in fact, you talk about, you talk about uh, education, right? Uh, not public education, right? Mm-hmm. Also top-down from ministry, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. So that is the way that, uh, for the lack of a better, sense, better way to phrase it, right? That is the way uh, Singaporeans have always known uh, like how they, how Singaporeans have always been ruled basically or, or rather how leadership is like predominantly in this country la. yeah and for correct th- correct correct and for the most part people have been okay but uh, we yeah. were asking today okay, someone in the chat actually asked us like yeah, yeah, why yeah, yeah. Why are people so upset now when rather in the JC's combining or secondary school combining they weren't as upset? Yeah. I do no, think that like, they okay. were upset. La. Yeah. But but I think that there, there has to be something to be said here about uh Yo and US and universities in general because uh universities are are very different entities from other public education uh institutions. Yes. Right? Universities are uh 
for the lack of a better word, it's kind of affiliated to public education, but actually they're also not. They run it like inter- independent uh, entities. Mm-hmm. They run as independent institutions. And a lot of decision making is made at the at the university level. Yes. Which yes. is rare. Okay, if you think about it, which is rare because that means it, it functions as if like a private school even though there's a lot of uh, governmental uh, uh, involvement lah, for all sorts of things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, now, the thing about a uh, university system in Singapore is that we follow a lot of the American uh, system. In what way? Or talk? rather, we try to pick up on some of the things that American systems do in terms of culture building. Okay. So you think about you think about Americans with their fraternity houses, you think of Americans with their uh, student uh, unions and whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it, a very downscaled version can be found in our local universities in terms of the uh, JCRC, the halls, yeah. and all that kind of thing. Okay, right? that's true. That's and true. in fact, our student union in every university, there exists a student union, right? Yes, yes. But they don't serve the purpose of what a student union is supposed to be. Right. <laughs> why, 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 why is the why is the student union supposed to be? At least from what I know, student unions also represent the students yeah. and like represent the yeah. voices in the when they're making decisions in school. Uh. Correct. That is an American thing. Okay. So okay. basically what happens what happens is that in an American political system, or rather in most uh uh, uh political systems in democracies that are like Western, right? Yeah. Uh if let's say there is a, a governmental policy that you don't like. What workers, what workers and people will do is that they will unionize, mm-hmm. and they will challenge. So that is what union was supposed to be. You think about it. Back in the day, uh, there was this thing called the student union riots in yes. Singapore. Oh, there because was? this was a system. There was. Oh wow! Okay, okay, okay. Please go check back into your so student union because stu- because workers, students, and small groups of citizens can unionize to try to challenge their governing body. It can happen at every single level. Y'all should go and check this out because there's a little bit of history in Singapore. It got a little bit violent. And I believe in most countries, there will always be a violent student uprising through a unionization of students. But that's beside the point. Those are the dark histories of humanity. But basically, the mere fact that a university can be created as an institute where students have the opportunity to unionize means that universities have this intrinsic, unspoken side to them, right? Where they are supposed to be an independent group of people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in that sense yes but this is not the case for Singapore at large I that's true because I mean Singapore we still have a very um, I mean f- we keep saying top down but really top down approach yes the government there is, is a lot no more yeah. correct and that's why you see this whole concept of people helping on helping uh, but not wearing masks and calling themselves sovereign right does not exist in Singapore okay think about it because we are not like that we are not a free country. Uh, yeah, I mean, we are not. Less our democracy so, is very different. Yeah, it's very now, different. Our democracy is very different from yes. the kind of uh, uh, liberal demo- democracy that exists in some of the Western countries. That is Think true. about it. Yeah. These are very obvious examples because we see them in pop culture all the time. And then people never stop to wonder why other country can do, our country cannot. Mm, I think the culture... Why? Why can't you declare that you're sovereign? for situations in Singapore. I mean, I think the culture and also the structure of how it's run and like the legal system, the governance and everything Correct. has been there already. Like this is how it's, it's, I keep saying top down, but top down is very structured, it's very hierarchical. Yes. Uh, there is hierarchical and it's just yeah. how it is no matter where you go, even in... Correct, correct. Even in schools. No, but you know, in, this, is, this, is, yeah. this is an indicator that we exist in a system that is very different from the ideals that, that some of these Western countries strive for. That's true. Right? Yes. So, because we live in a culture and a society that likes to be ruled top-down, for the lack of a better better term, likes to be ruled Mm top-down, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, this is where policies come into conflict with people with high tendencies for civil liberties. Because when you have high high tendencies for civil liberties and individualistic rights, right? Top-down decision-making does not sit right with you. No matter how big or small the decision now, when this decision becomes a gigantic situation like this, gigantic in the sense, I use, I use air quotes for gigantic because for university students, this is all they have and all they know. And, right? and the staff also, basically, their jobs are on the yeah, line. There are so many which is just jobs as on gigantic, the line. right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Then it does not sit well with them. And therein lies the conflict, you see. I, I, I'm, I'm wondering, because you say something along the lines of like, there needs yeah. uh, people want to be rude. 
in in our society, people want to be road top down. Do you think it's still now? Do you think okay. we still want to be road top down? Actually, because okay. I, I feel I, like we I, don't. Eh. I think in general, right, uh, I would say for the larger part of society, okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. society at large, yes, the answer is people like to be ruled. Top down. It may not be top down, but people like to be ruled in general. People like to have someone to follow. They don't, uh, they may not admit it. Mm-hmm. They may not even know it, mm-hmm. but they want to have a leader to follow. People want to be ruled. I believe this is something that you may have studied in terms of sociology or psychology. I I mean, I we do know that like there are some people who have a natural tendency to be followers. Some people have natural tendency yeah. to be leaders. And some people yeah. just like straight up just don't want to think. They just want to follow. They just want to like keep their head down and follow whoever the hell is in front. And I think mm. that's that's natural. I'm just wondering, because there are many different ways of leadership. Let's say top down is yeah. one way. Yeah. So it's like, it's like basically what the Yale, the Yale NUS situation is. Like the NUS yeah. president just went like, I want to dissolve it. For whatever reason, mm, mm, uh, mm. we don't know because he hasn't exactly said it. But let's, yeah. say, let's say even there was a perfectly good reason. He just said, I want to dissolve yeah. it. That's it. Yeah. Today we're dissolving it. Then email goes out and everything. That's yeah. one way of, of leadership. But there's also other ways of leadership which is like the more like, sit yeah. everyone down, let's have like a town hall, let's like talk there about are. it. But do you think I Singapore, totally agree with you. Do you think Singapore but will appreciate this that? This is where that one is in scarce resource for Singapore. Yeah, think do you about think it we'll because, appreciate it because our it, it would be appreciated by the academics, okay, by okay. the people who are now currently whose feathers are being riled up, and the people who uh back in the days of your back in the days of your would have unionized and tried to stage protests. Yes, this is what would have happened back in the day. Okay. And now this is the kind of situation that would have led to that if we talk about the 1960s, 1960s, 1980s kind of situation. But the, but, the, but the fact is, the fact is, we can't have this because we have a very strange kind of uh, society. In what way? We want to think like we have a lot of civil liberties, but we don't necessarily are able to act like we have a lot of civil liberties. Wow, that's a hot take, John. It's the, you want to it's a hot take, but I think uh, let me think about it. This is a very this is a very in the, a very symptomatic uh thing that you can see from this whole NUS situation. This petition, right, can get half the Singapore signature. Yes. And I'll bet my left nut. Okay. That doesn't at the end change of the anything. Day, NUS still got the final say. Nothing say. Nothing changes. Is that isn't that the problem? That is a problem, but yeah. you see, there, there there is there is an argument for it too. In a society mm. like ours, like ours, right, right, we can't have one standout aspect that functions differently from the rest of society. Clearly, top-down, top-down uh, bureaucracy, right, has worked and works well enough for certain things. No, no, no system is perfect. Let's let's just admit that. Right? Okay. Yes. Yes. No of course. No system is course. perfect. Yes. Right. But top-down bureaucracy has worked and works well enough for society and universities to function up to this point. Now, mm-hmm. what becomes the problem here, right? Because it has worked and functioned up to this point, the proponents for it and the people who are part of the system will be unwilling to sway. Yes. I, okay, right? I mean, the people who are in power, the people who are rather have leadership roles or are involved yeah. in it, they'll be like, yeah. They don't even need to be people in power. They just need to be proponents. Okay, yeah. People who have benefited from it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. The people who have benefited from yeah. this system, understandably, yes. they'll be like, yeah, this system has been working well for us. Why the hell are we changing it? And we can, yeah. we can get it because that's what we would think also if it's something in our favor. Correct. And that's why most of the people's poll is, uh, it's sad, but I understand what's going on. People yes. are apathetic <laughs> because yeah. this is the prevailing system that we recognize, that we know. Mm. I mean, so therein really it really lies the issue here because you see when you talk about people who are academics, yes. right? Academics uh celebrate more, a lot of uh individual individualistic talents. Yes. Right. Yes. An academic cannot shine if their boss always remains their boss regardless of your regardless of your results. Think about it. Wow. That okay. Wait. Time out. Can we repeat that? Think about it. Huh? An academic cannot shine. Right. Yeah. Okay, maybe maybe I draw a clearer picture. An yes. academic cannot shine in NS. Uh, yes, yes, I agree. That I agree. Right? I think you cannot you can think be too a much. Genius, you can be a genius private, but your captain say no means no. Yes. Okay, right? I agree. I agree. 
Now, that's a very good example of a top-down bureaucracy because of the rank system, right? Yes, yes, yes. So it's this as is the situation. As you guess, absolutely. So this is the situation that's happening in universities right now, which is with Yale NUS. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Yale mm-hmm. NUS, by the product of it being the S part, which is Singapore, yes, right, runs in a very interesting uh, bureaucracy, utilitarian, Frankenstein democratic system. Yes. Yes. Where the students have a say, but not much of a voice. I mean, this is very evident because especially, maybe not just Yale NUS, but just the NUS part of Yale NUS. Yes. Like, they truly just did it what it seems like overnight. In fact, after Correct. everyone matriculated, then a few weeks passed, then they're like, well, by the way, um, four years later, this ain't going to be here anymore. And yeah. it really, it just came out of the woodworks for a lot of people. And that's why I think yeah. a lot of people are very upset as well. So I think now the question we can ask, right, is first of all, like, of course, this is a prevailing system or the leadership uh, style of yeah. our, of Singapore or the system for a large majority yeah. of our society. Is that something that should be changed? Uh, okay. That is a question that I find difficult to give you a straight answer right now. A yes or no. I feel that there is much more that has to be explored here. Because you see, right, <clears throat> like I mentioned, like, let's, let's, let's put it out there once again, okay, that no system is perfect. Yes, I agree. I agree. You just okay. have to pick and choose our what, a system where A system where top-down politics is not always perfect, a system where every petition gets hurt is also not perfect. Yes, I think that's like the biggest like uh, opposition against like I guess hearing everyone out or like a like a yeah, yeah. like a full on democracy. At least from JC or secondary school, I learned that like there are people who will say that like oh it can be inefficient. Uh, the the uh-huh. hearing everyone's voices might not be very efficient, might not be the best way to go, etc. Exactly. And actually, I think you brought up a few key important points here. You see, this is exactly what Singapore as a society values and as a result, our institute values as our institutions value as well. That's true. Efficiency. I agree. I agree. But, Efficiency. So mm-hmm. you see, okay, no, let's let's follow me on this thought experiment here because yes. I've, I've been thinking about this since that day when we talked about it, where we talk about efficiency and uh, uh, people complaining about how NUS is run like a business. These are two main points that I think are very indicative of uh, why this petition battle will never be won. Because these are what <sighs> things, these are what the school values. Yes. Or rather, remove the name NUS, any institution in Singapore values. That's what Singapore it values. Be, so stop. Yeah, it could be Semcor. It could be uh, uh, some cleaning company. It could be, some, you know, it, that's, how, that's what they value. Efficiency is number one. I agree. I agree. And the best way to be efficient is to have a business mindset. Yes. Why? Business mindset cut costs, increase profit. Yes. And I think and that's... And if that's not the definition of, bef- de- <laughs> of efficiency, I don't know what is. I think that's as uh, prevalent of a mindset as in Singapore. And a lot of people yeah. understand that. A lot of people buy into it and they agree with it. Um, yes. Personally, if you ask me, I am a huge idealist. So I'm going to come out yeah. and just say this, right? But I don't think leadership should be done this way. Mm. And it might be because I am young and I still have a full of vigor and I still have full of hope for society and full of hope for people. <laughs> but I, and I'm the jaded bitch. Yeah, <laughs> you can see exactly. So you are jaded. So you'll be like, you'll be like, hey, this is how the cookie crumbles. Life is like that. Sorry, I'm a nihilist. You're an idealist and I'm a nihilist. Yeah, for me personally, when I read this, I thought it was a huge, first of all, huge PR, PR nightmare. Because yeah. even beyond the leadership, if you really want to be top down, there's a right way to be top down so that people don't get mm-hmm. angry like this. And I don't think NUS did a very good job with that in that sense. In mm. terms of the PR, just a PR perspective or like a publicity or media perspective, they did, in my opinion, a pretty terrible job. But yeah. even beyond that, like the leadership way, right? And Blank do ask a very good question. How else should a leader lead? And yeah. that's that's a that's the important question that I wa- we want to get into with this podcast as well. Personally, I believe in I believe in the leader being the equal. Yeah. And being okay, I'm very idealistic. Let's once again put it out there. I'm okay. very idealistic. I, no, I that's believe, fine. That's fine. Tell us, tell us, tell us your version because okay. I would like to hear it too. Yeah, so I think I am someone that believes in the fact that like people will follow you not because you are a leader, but because you are uh someone who they respect. 
and they right. they will do things for you not because you have the role, not because you are the leader, the president, or whatever it is. They'll do it because they like you as a person and they respect you as yeah. a person. So yeah. that takes a, that's a lot harder than if you had a rank. Let's say I have a, I'm a sergeant. I throw into a sergeant position. That's why in like psychology, yeah. I'm doing psychology or leadership module as well. I wish I had yeah. more information so I can talk a little bit more about this. But as like a as like a sergeant, right? I'm given the role. So I'm being forced, yeah. I'm being thrown in the leadership position. So I'm kind of leader by just not even by choice. I'm leader by by rank or leader by position. Yeah. But then yeah, yeah, yeah. they are the emergent leaders. And for the guys out there, you understand this. Like there's a sergeant, there's the officer, but then within your own mm. bunk. There's like this one corporal that rules the entire Bangwan. There's yeah. like this one person that's like the what we call the Red Indian Chief. And yeah, yeah. The, the one that were who are the emergent leaders, the people who are leaders because people yes. actually want them to be a leader. Yes. And not because the rank mm. was there. And yeah. I think the problem with this, right? Yeah, I want to pull it into army, right? I think yeah. the, the US person almost did a pool rank in this situation. He absolutely did. Which I don't think was sit very well. In the army, but in the army, because they're Bopian, they're okay. But even yeah. less so in the civilian world where you're dealing with people Correct. who are highly intellectual, people who yeah. have a lot of opinions, and second of all, people's livelihood is in the stake. I think yeah. within that 12 months, there should have been, even if your end goal is to merge, I don't even think that's a problem. Yeah. I think the problem is that the way they got there wasn't quite right. Even okay. if, if they say, okay, we want to merge, what yeah. I would have done, and I know maybe because I haven't been in a leadership position, what I would have done is talk to the different people, say, if you are going to yeah. merge, here's what the concerns are, and address them even yeah. before we merge. So yeah. they say, okay, student, student uh, culture and ability, uh, culture and everything, will, they say they will be diluted or they'll be under NUS, so they'll be a bit scared that it will be gone. Here's yep. how I will do. I will appoint someone from the UNUS, uh, the teacher who is in charge of like the student activities and everything. I will keep him on and make and promise yeah. that it will be the same thing, just that it's merged. Yeah. And all, all right. these things, I think, goes a very long way because people like to be heard. People like to know that they are respected and they like to know that their decision is the decision yeah. includes their own point of view and them as a stakeholder. Because right now, mm. I think they just feel unheard. And as a leader, right. I think that's like the number one thing you should not be doing. <laughs> Correct. But that's okay, just my but opinion. Like, okay, I totally agree with you, but I'm just going to play the devil's advocate here. Of course, yes. Okay? To talk about the people who are not the idealists. Yes. First things first, idealists are the minority. Mm-hmm. Which means, which means, right, if you were to be in a leader in a bureaucracy, mm. or rather a system that has always been steeped in bureaucracy, yes, you don't need to care about the minority. Oh... That's one thing. Ooh. That's one thing. Second thing. Second that's thing, right? True. Okay. okay yes, Coming yes. to the point that I mentioned earlier about why people like to be ruled. I, this is something that's really important. There are emergent leaders, and this are, that's true. People like to be ruled, okay? Because people do not look to the leaders that they respect the most all the time, because mm. not everyone is always in that uh, ideal emotional state to be able to suss that out. You know who people look to? Who? People who can get things done. Yes. Yes. So, fair. when you talk about a situation like NS or a situation like NUS, right? What is the determinant of someone who quote unquote can get things done? Seniority. Yes. So, first thing being that the people that make noise are already not the minority, uh, not the majority. Secondly, the majority look to the most senior person and trust that they got a plan. Mm. And that's why. People don't even know what the qualifications of your captain are, but the Lan Lan corporal would listen. Correct. But I think... So they not... may not listen. They, there may be a lot of discontent, which is true. You know, mm. evidently in this case, there's a lot of discontent. There's a lot of discontent, yes. But I'm pretty sure there won't be a revolution. Okay, okay. Think about it. Think about it. Nah. This is this is very important here because I do understand, I do sympathize with the idealist and I would say a part of me subscribe to, more to that, feed, that, that train of thought than what I'm mentioning right now. Yes, but, but if we were to, to really zoom back, if we really zoom out and then we we take our we truly take our third party stance here. Okay. Right? Yes. And 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 admit to ourselves that no matter what kind of hoo-ha, NUS and the president will not sway. Yes. There can only be two reasons, right? Firstly, enough people in the in enough stakeholders trust that something will be done. Correct. Yes. And secondly, 
right? No matter how loud the idealists are, they're not the majority. Okay. Okay. Yes, I agree. And I think another yeah. good point that you brought up was trust. And I yeah. think that's another big thing about uh, the leadership, the ideal that I have is the, yeah. the idea of, of trust. And Blank do actually say something like, yeah. it sounds like a lot to me that your decision making, like my decision making, is based on, yeah. uh, purely based on minimizing butthurt. And I kind of agree no, in that sense. Actually, it's true. Eh. Let, let, let me tell you, you know, like, people like to be rude. Like, I, I keep saying this, huh? you don't need to be the best leader, you know? Yeah. You just need to suck the least. Think about <laughs> it, huh? You don't need to be the best leader. You just need to be the least bad. That's 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 true. That's true. That's true. That, that's the thing. You see. You see. This is what I mean by by in bureaucracy. You, you cannot think of you cannot think of the ideal. You always think like, oh, we want the most respected person to to be up there. No, okay. More often than not, in a in a situation like in Singapore, given our society and our institutes mirroring the society, right? We don't mind the least bad. Mm-hmm. You know, the least worst. It's the okay lah, the good enough. It's ah, the like <laughs> shit. Everyone sucks. I'll pick the less the lesser evil. Yeah, okay. I think that um I agree with that. And I think practically mm. speaking, especially I can speak here and say that here's how I will lead. But let's be honest, when yeah. I was leading, I was not the perfect leader. And most people who are under me will know that as well. So I can sit yeah. here yeah. with all these ideals and what I think a leader should be, but at the end of the day, did I do a good job? That's up to everyone to decide. Not it's just, questionable, not just right? It's questionable. questionable. So I also, but I do think that trust was a very big thing in this situation. I think no matter whether you are top down or you are taking my approach of leadership, trust is the key yeah. to leadership. And that's includes yeah. and trust includes like uh, integrity and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. The big reason why a lot of people like to be followed, as you mentioned, is that they are very willing to trust. They they trust yeah. the person up there, whether it's uh, the government or whether it's a bigger party, or they trust their captain. And sometimes they might not agree with the decision, but just because they trust them, they will willingly yeah. follow. No, but like, like even trust here uh, can be broken down even more because you think exactly. about trust, right? Yeah. Trust, uh, if you just mention trust as a concept in itself, that's very idealistic. There are two kinds of trust. Okay, what ways? One is trust in their character and ability. That's the one that I believe you're referring to. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Not all leaderships like that. Uh, it's like that. If we think about the who sucks least kind of way of thinking. Uh. Mm. That means you trust that you follow this person, you have the highest chance of survival. Surviving, yeah. Yeah. You just need to continue your existence because I hate to say it, but most people exist like that. They just want to exist. I agree. I agree. And I think so they but, trust this person can just continue their existence. So in a situation like NUS, let's draw it back. Yeah, okay, draw because it back, we, yeah. don't draw, we don't want to, to go too far on, on concepts, right? If you talk about things like Yo NUS, right? It is uncomfortable and there's a lot of discontent because people do not understand what's going on because of the transparency issue. But it is very sad why it's still being pushed through is because enough senior stakeholders, right, who are confused, right, still believe that the system is providing them something even though it's invisible. And any other system may not do better than what is happening right now. And this is the symptom of our society. So is it a good thing or a bad thing? I cannot really say. Because you think about it, right? Mm -hmm. The reason why Singapore uh, and the Singaporean institutions, uh, universities, and for any matter, anything that exists within the, 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 the land, the borders of Singapore has existed till now clearly means that something is working. Sure. Yes. It might be uh, uh, the least suck kind of way of working but mm. it's working I also think that the context matters so it does we can talk about the army and the way that we lead in the army what a good what yeah. makes a good army leader and what makes a good sports captain or what makes a good uh, class monitor or class president or whatever is very different yeah. so just the context itself or like the era you're born in whether or not uh, like I, I'm assuming in the past there were uh, people were des was desperate for direction people wanted someone to lead them and guide them so they are a lot more willing to yeah. take to like I guess be tolerant towards top down approaches but now the context is no longer the same so the question now is really is top down approach still the right leadership style for this context, and okay. not the right so leadership let me, let me style just, for everything? Uh, okay, let me just let's uh, uh, elaborate on this point. Uh. So the yeah. thing about it is that I feel that top down approach has its place, right? But may not necessarily, uh, it should not necessarily be the prevailing uh, strategy when it comes to dealing with students and academics. Mm. 
because exactly. academia and and uh knowledge based uh uh institutions reward things that sometimes run run counter to the values of uh uh bureaucracy. Okay, like what? Okay, we talk about bureaucracy. Very simple. One of the things that they value is efficiency, for example, right? So. Uh, efficiency will mean that if we have a nice top-down structure, the structure is work is is this way, right? We trust in the leader in this way. But in uh in academia and for people who are pushed towards academics, tertiary education onwards, right? Mm. They are being pushed into fields where they learn to break that mold. So as a result of that, mm. right, I can now see from the student standpoint, you can't be teaching them to do one thing, but then you treat them the other way. Yes. Like, i give you a good example. Okay? You train people in NS to be leaders through OCS, SES. Yes. But when they come out of it, you expect them to become leaders. You don't treat them back the same way. It's not like you go through a course only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. You get what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is where the misalignment is very crucial and the pain point, I think, exists. Because you give them <sighs> a, a place, place to flourish differently but then mm. you slam down by telling them that actually you're just a small fish in a big tank. And yeah, okay, I agree. And I also think that the just the generational era that we are in, in terms of like being more uh, politically involved, uh, youths mm. are becoming more, uh, for lack of a better word, woke, but in a better term, I think it's like more, 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 more involved in what makes their yeah. environment and more involved in building their society. I think personally, I think top-down approach needs to stop within soon lah. If not, yeah, I, 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 that shit is about to happen. That's, that's my opinion. I, I agree with you, but also I only agree to a small extent. I think that top down, the top down approach, right, uh, shouldn't stop. What it should do is to be modified. It has to change. Systems mm. are dead, but people are alive. You can't uh, keep a system the way it was all the time. Yes. Things become archaic faster than humans die. So, a system that is uh uh, out of touch, right? Does not have to go. It has to change. So the thing about the top-down I approach agree. is that we cannot completely radic- uh, radically flip uh, all conversations in Singapore away mm. uh, around, right? Yeah. And then introduce something completely different because larger society might not appreciate that. And we have to co- take that in consideration. Yes. So what it has to do is that it has to change. You see, like for example, uh, instead of having a, a top-down bureaucratic approach, it can uh, intermingle with all kinds of other uh, policy-making decisions. I am not a sociologist. I can't come up with the correct terms for it. But like, you know, like how Singapore has evolved uh, in terms of its leadership style, so too should institutions. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I think, uh, I mean, I should really ask my prof for a side of leadership to come down for an animal episode once. I think it's a yeah. very interesting topic. But... I think personally, the context matters a lot. And in this case, mm. I think what may work in the past and what has gotten us to, no doubt that top-down approach probably got us very far. And I think that's kind yeah. of true. But I think it's to also recognize that certain approaches no longer work. Uh, and yeah. there, there needs to be a little bit of a change. And Yes, uh, absolutely. Randomology said top-down approach should be used sparingly, I feel. And I kind of agree. I think there are certain situations and contexts where top-down approach will work. Let's say you're in, you in war, you're at the battlefield. And... Uh, your enemy is firing at you that's, they just launch a grenade at you whatever it is yeah. in that case you want to, the captain to just tell them hey rotate right or hey rotate left yeah. etc these mm-hmm. are things where top down approach would work and, yes, but there absolutely. are other situations that you kind of have to adapt there's no one size fit all leadership style and unfortunately it seems like there, like the large majority of society has been adopting one size but the the sad thing to bring back to NUS, I think Blando said something mm. that I think kind of uh, like really I I agree. He said that I think the NUS won't really react in this case. Uh, I I think we won't, the NUS won't really react because the outcry seems to be disproportionately coming from their students who yes. hold zero cuts and can't really hit them where it hurts. Yep, correct. And I unfortunately agree, and I yeah. unfortunately agree because. Uh, yeah. I think the petition is doing a very good job in terms of like raising yeah. awareness for this but at the end of the day what I view this is whatever we're doing from now on is fighting for the next battle I think this battle is really Correct. lost yep okay in the meantime uh, before we before we wrap up this topic let me just take a quick camera break oh because I need to urgently go to the toilet I see. <laughs> <laughs> okay let's take a camera break okay 
Okay, and we are back from our little camera break. Uh, before we end <laughs> off, Alistair, I think I think we can we can start to wrap up our thoughts a little bit on today's topic. Yes. Um, yeah. How, what how, what do you think is gonna is gonna come out of this, man? I personally think that I I I I personally think that the battle has been really been lost. I think uh-huh. that the battle we are fighting now is for the future. That Mm-mm. like the or rather the battle that the petition the people who are starting the petition they are trying to lobby yeah. for change for a better future. Not so much. Yeah. I think now personally, I'm a I I as much as I say I'm an idealist. Not in this yeah. case, I think I'm I I I I'm quite practical in the sense that like, I don't think this is going to change anything. Like. And that's yeah. very unfortunate. But I, I would love to be proved uh, wrong. But yeah. Um, I don't think I, this will change anything. Personally, just yeah. to wrap up, I think the biggest problem in this case was really the trust. Like. I think people didn't trust yeah. the president. People and yeah. partially it's because the lack of uh transparency, the lack of yeah. discussions with the students, lack of the discussions with the staff, and also lack yeah. of and apparently there was also a uh, misleading information that was put out. Uh not too sure about this, but I'll give you guys the resources to form your own opinions. Yeah. Uh but right. I think these are a few reasons why people don't trust him. And yeah. fundamentally any leadership style, whether or not top down or whatever, works on the basis of trust and the basis of integrity, on the basis of a lot of other things of that a leader must have. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. I think that that core of a leader, which is the trust that the followers have to have in him or her, is not even fulfilled now. And I think that's the biggest yeah. problem. And he has to come somehow find a way to earn back that trust. Lah. Yeah. See if and, he wants and, to be effective. Like- Mm. And I would also want to speak for the other side of the equation, which are the people who are petitioning and the people who are who are taken aback and feeling very uh, assaulted by this decision making. Right? Uh, we must understand that uh, the age of revolutionaries is over. <laughs> right? We no longer can exist in a society where revolutionaries uh, become heroes and change the narrative. That era is long gone. So coming in with a hashtag no top down trying to rock the boat so that things sway in your direction very unfortunately will not get you the results what instead we should strive for right in order to abolish something that is overly bureaucratic is uh, evolutionary is, is something that has a skill towards evolution so instead of abolishing you, you improve the situation instead of abolishing you assimilate okay okay Okay. To assimilate and change the system, take the best from each parts, and then jettison the the worst parts of each system is how we will truly move forward. So what we should strive for, right, is something that is more palatable to the to the bureaucrats, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? Opening up conversation, inviting our ideas in, mm-hmm. and that will dilute both ideals into something that is actionable. Because right now, we have two ideals fighting for a piece of a pie and clearly one ideal has more power than the other. Yes. Yes. And in order for us to enact true change, we need to assimilate so that we can get rid of ideals in the first place. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think yeah. some people will not agree. I mean, there are people who are over here that still believe that revolutionary change can happen, and uh, and that's fine. And that's fine. That's yeah. Fine. Before before we end off, I just want to I uh, just want to address all the people who are watching. You know, uh, overthink. We always encourage y'all to disagree with us, but please do it in an intellectual manner because after all, we're all just sharing our opinions here, and we always come into these kind of conversations ready to have our minds changed. So we ask you to do the same as well. And I mean, even within this discussion, you can clearly see that John and I have a uh, pretty different opinions. With regards yeah. to this, even this situation, uh, I mean, I I personally think that no matter what your opinion is, uh, we will see how this uh this saga continues to play out, play out. Yeah. This situation continues to play out, and hopefully in the future there's change, and that's what I'm holding out hope for. It's more of yeah. in the future that the leaders of tomorrow or the leaders in of Singapore, no matter what situation, what context, will be able to Correct. lead more effectively, regardless of what approach yeah. it is, lah. Correct, correct, correct. And like, you know, I, of course, you know, if NUS, any NUS students watching this, please let us know your thoughts. And of course, I know the NUS, uh, UNUS president is probably watching this also. And the NUS president also watching this. Uh, let us know what you think about our episode. Lah. They are definitely not watching this. <laughs> 100% not watching this. But I mean, <laughs> anyone who wants to share their opinions, please do feel free to put in the comments down below. So yes. sorry we couldn't uh, get a UNUS person or a person from the situation to come on the podcast today because I yeah. only discussed this with John yesterday. 
so it's a little yep. bit rushed. But we would love to if you if you guys think that it's enough to do a second episode on it or as a follow up, yeah. we will, we could definitely consider doing that as well. Yep. For all you know, there could be a new development that makes us this entire episode make us eat our words, and then we'll have to discuss it again. And that's when we truly encourage you all to come on our show and let us know what you think. Because after all, neither of us are stakeholders. We're just two people trying to see from a third party standpoint. So do let us know a little bit more. <laughs> and but we are yeah. two assholes on the internet with, you know, with a podcast. So, you know, what do we know? Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> and with that, thank you guys so much for watching this week's episode of In My Opinion. Yes. I hope to all you my guys YouTube are people, okay, yeah. Correct, correct. All the YouTube people out there, right? Please remember the, uh, the resources are in the links in the description box below. Uh, follow us on Instagram, imo.pod. Uh, do check us out on uh, Telegram and Twitch as well. Yes. And with that, thank you guys so much. Stay safe. Don't get COVID. See you guys next week. Bye. Yeah. Bye.